Hi folks, this is Alan, and I'm back with another movie review for you, and today I'm going to be reviewing Blade Runner 2049, the 2017 sequel to the 1982 sci-fi cult classic film Blade Runner. Um, the original was directed by Ridley Scott. This new version is directed by, I might be pronouncing his name wrong, but I'm going to say Denis Villeneuve. Denis Villeneuve, the director of Blade Runner 2049. And by the way, lots of people are calling this film Blade Runner 2049, but you know what? I'm going to say Blade Runner 2049. I mean, nobody calls the sci-fi classic by Stanley Kubrick 2001 A Space Odyssey. You say 2001 A Space Odyssey. So, Blade Runner 2049. Um, this review will be spoiler-free, which means I virtually can't tell you anything plot-wise about this movie, just the way Denis Villeneuve would want it, as he has said in the press, you know, to, to all the critics, if you're going to say something up front about this movie, try not to reveal any important plot points if you if you can. So, okay, uh, basically all I'm going to tell you about uh, Blade Runner 2049 is that it takes place 30 years after the original Blade Runner movie, a futuristic society where there are uh, robots or androids known as replicants that are uh, living amongst us. And there are certain cops called Blade Runners who have to wipe out these uh, these replicants, apparently, because they, they came to Earth um, without permission. You know, they, they were built to, uh, to help out on, on colonies in space, and some of them have come back to Earth to try to expand their, their four-year lifespans, and they've done so illegally. And so these Blade Runner cops are sent out to retire these uh, replicants that have no business being back here on Earth uh, and, you know, retire them, that kind of thing. Um, so anyway, we are 30 years later after the original Blade Runner, and now we have a new Blade Runner uh, played by Ryan Gosling. Harrison Ford, of course, was the original Blade Runner from the original film uh, named uh, Rick Deckard, and uh, Ryan Gosling is now the new Blade Runner named Kay. And basically he discovers a secret, a, a mystery about these replicants, and it basically leads him on a quest to solve the mystery, and somehow this mystery involves the missing Rick Deckard, played by Harrison Ford. I really can't say anything more about the plot than that if I'm going to keep this movie review uh, spoiler-free. So, there you go. Okay. Blade Runner 2049. Um, you know, I'm not going to argue with anybody out there who doesn't like Blade Runner 2049. This movie is definitely not for everybody. First of all, it's a really long movie. It's two hours and 43 minutes. Um, but you know what? I wasn't bored at all by this film. And, and, and this movie definitely reminded me that, you know, it really doesn't matter how long a movie is as long as the filmmaker keeps the film moving, keeps it interesting, and doesn't bore me, and the time just flies by. You know when you have those phone calls with your, with your best friend, and you're on the phone for an hour, and then one hour turns into two hours, and then two hours turns into three hours, and the time just flies by, you don't even notice it. And um, that's basically how it is with a really good, really, really, really good long movie. Um, for me, I thought Denis Villeneuve uh, kept this film moving, even though I know this movie is going to bore the shit out of a lot of other people. But I think if you like the original Blade Runner, uh, it's my opinion you're definitely going to like uh, Blade Runner 2049. If you love the original Blade Runner, I think you will definitely love uh, Blade Runner 2049. But if you're not so big on the original Blade Runner movie, then then uh, I don't know how you're going to feel about uh, this this sequel. But if you happen to be a Blade Runner fan, chances are you will definitely appreciate uh, Blade Runner 2049. Just be mindful, it's a long movie. <laughs> Very long movie. Uh, Denis Villeneuve doesn't rush things. There is action in this film, but it's not action-packed per se. Um, he just takes his dear sweet time as we watch Ryan Gosling as uh, Agent K walking around the futuristic society of Blade Runner 2049, searching for clues, learning a few more things about the replicants that he didn't know before, and including a particular revelation about the replicants, which I can't tell you here in this review, but it's a doozy. Um, and as he's trying to hunt down Rick Deckard, um, yeah, Dennis Villeneuve, he doesn't rush anything. So basically, if you're going to go see Blade Runner 2049, you just got to say to yourself, 
okay? This is going to be a long movie. I'm just going to sit back and I'm just going to drink it all in. And hopefully this movie will not bore me. Some people in the audience will definitely be bored, but not me. Definitely not me. I was, I was very, uh, very, very into this film. I was with this film all the way. The visuals are stunning. If you thought the visuals in the original Blade Runner were, were fantastic, uh, I think the visuals in Blade Runner 2049 are just as fantastic. This whole futuristic world, things are also dirtier and grimier. Uh, there's like a rain of ash that comes down. I mean, there's, there's regular rain, but then there's rain of ash. Uh, you still have a futuristic, uh, a futuristic society with tons of buildings and city blocks that go on for miles and miles. The flying cars, um, the neon signs, the holographic images, and of course they are more advanced now than they were uh, 30 years ago. And the ones from 30 years ago were pretty damn impressive, but now the holographic images are even more impressive now. Um, the, the, the use of lights and shadows and textures. Uh, Roger Deakins is the cinematographer on this film. He better damn well earn an Oscar. Uh, he's never won an Oscar. He did the cinematography on uh, the James Bond movie Skyfall, which was fantastic. He didn't win the Oscar for that, though. And he's due. He's definitely due. His cinematography is fantastic on this film. The colors, the shadows, the lights, uh, the use of rain and all of that. I mean, just like a chip off the old... Uh, Original Blade Runner, directed by Ridley Scott. Uh, Dennis Villeneuve's direction, I think, is terrific. And the cast of this film, I think, is really terrific. Um, I haven't... I think I've only seen one other Ryan Gosling movie, and that was the one where it was like a comedy film where he falls in love with a... a, uh, a well, I gotta say, a sex doll, because he's a very lonely guy. He can't get a girlfriend, and he, he strikes up a relationship with a sex doll. <laughs> Something like that. I think that was Ryan Gosling. I think that's the only other Ryan Gosling movie I've seen. But here, he's really, really good as uh, Agent K. And, uh, I mean, I liked him, and I followed him along in this movie. Uh, Harrison Ford shows up late in this movie, and you may be waiting a while, waiting, waiting, waiting for Harrison Ford to show up, but when he does finally show up as Rick Deckard, uh, it's well worth the wait. And Harrison Ford, uh, wonderful as the older Rick Deckard, and he definitely has some, some uh, life experience uh, as Rick Deckard from the last time we saw him that he fills in Agent K on, and uh, very interesting story, very interesting tale to find out where Rick Deckard has been in these last 30 years, and Harrison Ford plays it great. Um, everybody in the cast is terrific. Uh, Robin Wright is is fine as uh, Lieutenant uh, Joshi or Joshi. Uh, she's basically uh, Agent K's lieutenant that he works for, and she's quite good, very commanding uh, in her role. Um, there are like three new uh, young women actresses in this movie that I've never heard of before, but I think this movie is going to make them all stars. Um, again, I got to be careful not to reveal too much about their characters, but uh, Anna de Armas plays Joy, uh, who's Agent K's holographic girlfriend. Wonderful performance. Beautiful, beautiful young lady besides. That goes without saying. And uh, she makes a wonderful companion for Agent K. Um, Sylvia Hoax is a bitch on wheels as uh, the villainess uh, named Love, who works for... Uh, the uh, the uh, Wallace Corporation, and she goes after Agent K. And uh, but man, oh man, what a presence! Beautiful woman, but what a scary presence! I mean, you don't want to mess with Love, spelled L U V, played by Sylvia Hoax. <laughs> like I said, when she goes after Agent K and and uh, Deckard towards the end of the film, I mean, damn, she is scary. Um, but powerful performance from Sylvia Hoax. She's great as the character Love. Um, and I also enjoyed, uh, let's see, Mackenzie Davis as, I, I guess she plays a, a, a prostitute or seems to be a prostitute named uh, Mariette. Um, although we learned something else about her later on in the film, which I can't talk about here. Uh, she was quite good. And again, very lovely on the eyes. All the women in this film, <laughs> very lovely. But I'd never heard of these actresses before. But I'm telling you, Blade Runner 2049 is going to make stars out of all of them. Uh, and I will also mention uh, Carla Jury in the role of Dr. Anna Staline, Staline, Dr. Anna Staline, I'll, I'll say. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say too much about her character other than she she does uh, memory programming. Uh, and then there's something else about her uh, that, that we find out. But again, I can't talk about it here. But Carla Jury, very good in her in her role as a Dr. Anna 
Staline or Staline, whatever. Uh, Dave Batista shows up briefly as as a replicant named Sapper Morton. You may also know Dave Batista, of course, from the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Um, but uh, yeah, he's quite good. It's a small role, but he does what he can with it. And I will also make mention of Jared Leto as Neander Wallace. A very weird performance from Jared Leto. I haven't seen too many of his films. And I didn't see uh, Suicide Squad where he played the Joker. But I'll just say his character is indeed very, very strange. Um, did I like him in the role? Did I not like him in the role? Some people don't like Jared Leto in this film. I'll say he's interesting. He's a, it's, it's a very interesting character, uh, Neander Wallace, who, who's now the runner of the corporation that makes the replicants. And uh, he's also a very shady character besides. And... Um, very weird character, very weird, very bizarre, uh, but I find him to be a very intriguing character, and I did think Jared Leto's performance, for me anyway, uh, was was quite good. Very, uh, very intriguing. An intriguing performance of an intriguing character, uh, however bizarre he may be, Jared Leto. Um, again, visual effects, just as stunning as they were in the original Blade Runner. Brilliant cinematography by Roger Deakins. Um... Again, Denis Dennis, Dennis Villeneuve's direction of this film is, is terrific. I like that he takes his time with this film and doesn't rush anything. Um, that might piss off some other people, but it didn't piss off me. He also directed the sci-fi film Arrival that starred Amy Adams and uh, Jeremy, Re Jeremy Renner. But personally, I like Blade Runner 2049 better. I really do. Um, I was much more interested in this film and it really held my interest. Uh, I mean, I liked Arrival, but uh, not as much as, as this one. I really, really enjoyed this, this new Blade Runner film. Uh, the music by Hans Zimmer and Benjamin Walfish. Uh, basically picking up the mantle from where Vangelis left off with the original Blade Runner. Powerful music. Some might argue that's a little too blaring at times. That you know, and, and some of the other synthesizer uh, textures that they put in this film, but but I thought it was very powerful, um, very, very powerful uh, score for this film, and there's definitely echoes of what uh, Vangelis did uh, in the original Blade Runner, so I did like what Hans Zimmer and Benjamin Walfish did uh, with this film. Uh, there will be those that are going to be turned off by this movie, again, because of the running time. Um, let's not forget, also, the original Blade Runner from 1982 was not a box office hit, uh, on its original release, and it was only over the passing of time that the original Blade Runner became the cult classic that it is now. Um, as I understand it, Blade Runner 2049, at the time I'm shooting this video, not off to the greatest start at the box office. Again, it might be the running time that's scaring people off. Uh, maybe Blade Runner was simply before a lot of people's times, and, uh, and uh, you know, not as many people are going to see it. Also, because the new Blade Runner movie is uh, R-rated, well, the original Blade Runner, I think, was R-rated, so maybe that's keeping some people away. I think this movie deserves to do much better at the box office than what it's doing. But like I said, I'm not going to argue with anybody who doesn't like this new Blade Runner movie. It might be too slow for some of you. Also, there's going to be, as you're watching this film, there's going to be a lot of shots, a lot of slow shots of uh, Ryan Gosling walking around the Blade Runner 2049 landscapes trying to solve the mystery. And it is indeed very slow. But you know... While it may bore some people, I was captivated. I sat there and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I just drank it all in. Then uh, I will say there is a door kind of left open for a third Blade Runner movie should they choose to make one. Only time will tell if they do. But um, I think, uh, to sum up, Blade Runner 2049 is an excellent sequel to the original Blade Runner. It complements the first Blade Runner film very, very well. And, uh, yeah, I, I would be more than happy to go see this movie again in the theaters. Um, the time flew by for me. I wasn't bored. And I really, really enjoyed Blade Runner 2049. If you enjoy the original Blade Runner, chances are you will enjoy the sequel, Blade Runner 2049. I did. So, thumbs up. Two big thumbs up on Blade Runner 2049. All right. Well, that's my review of Blade Runner 2049. This is Alan. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. Don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time for another movie review. Bye.